In this video, we're going to introduce a proof of the Pythagorean theorem. And I like this proof because it uses what we know about right triangles. So for example, if I set up a right triangle here with some, some length and, and on the legs and some length on the hypotenuse, we'll have them be variables, let's say A, B, and C. And, and you should, if you know the Pythagorean theorem, which says A squared plus B squared equals C squared, Right, you can see why I chose those three variables. It's going to help us get to this formula right here. So what do we do? Well, if we have this triangle right here, we can make four copies of it. And, and what will that do? Well, four copies of this triangle can be arranged into a perfect square. So let's say I just set my square up first. So you can see how this is working. All right, so this is my square. I'm going to attempt to do this, I guess, without a square tool on this program because it can't turn squares here. So there we go. All right, so imagine that's a, a square. All right, it's tilted on its side. And in this square, we can see four right triangles built off of this one here. So four copies of this one. So here I'll draw one. There's one copy. And then I can, I can turn it. And there's another copy. I can turn it again to get another copy. And then I can turn it a last time to get a fourth copy. And now I've essentially taken one, so my first one, and let me actually color code this. The green will be my second. Just one more time, here's the pink, third. And a fourth triangle, right, into a square. Now, you might notice that there's a gap here in the middle. And if I had drawn this perfectly, can you guess what shape this would be in the middle? Well, this would be a square. So essentially, we can put these four triangles together to form a big square with a little gap in the middle. Let me just color this in here, different pen. Um, so how does this help us? What do we know? Well, what, what square is this? What did I just build? Well, this square, right, this length right here, this side, and of course every side because it's a square is what? Well this, this side right here is C. It's the hypotenuse. So the area of this square is, is what? Well to find the area of a square you multiply one side by the other. So we multiply one side which is C, some amount, times another. Another C. And that is equal to C to the second power. Right? That means the same thing. So this is a, is a C square. And how is this connected to a square and b square? Well, what is the area of this square, right? This bottom side right here of this blue triangle, use the right color here, is a. And this height of this triangle is b. How do we find the area of a triangle? Well, we take the base, a, multiply it by the height, in this case, b, and then we divide it by 2. So that would be a, b, over 2, or AB times a half, or however you want to write that. Now the total area of the four triangles, right, there are four of them, will be four times the area of one triangle, which is this right here. So now we just do four times AB over 2. Well, this is like having four halves of AB, and that equals 2AB. You might have seen this before where they cross this out and say 4 divided by 2 is 2. Right, we multiply this out. Either way, we get 2AB. So, so far, the area of these four triangles equals 2AB. But we're, we're trying to rewrite the area of C square, the whole square, in a different way. And that brings us to the last part. The key to this whole proof is this little square in the middle. What is that? And how do we know? Well. The total area of the inside of C squared is equal to 2AB plus this square in here. And what is that? Well, this length right here, I'll look at this side, and let me use pink actually. This length right here is length B. And this little length here, let me use the green. Actually, let me use, I'm sorry, blue. This length right here is A. So B and A. Let me write that over here as well. Here's B. 
and right next to it, A. The square is this remaining side right here. You see that length right here. Well, what is that? Well, pretend we take this length, B, and we subtract out A from it. What do we get? Let me use a different font. So imagine B, this whole distance, and we take away this little distance right here, right? B minus A. Well, what's that? That equals this little distance right here. Because you took this whole length and took away this teal color, what's left is this orange length. And that's the side of the square in the middle. So now we have to find the area of this square with this side length. That's how long the side is. How do we do that? Well, now we square B minus A. And this is something you might be familiar with, right? Squaring this out. B minus A times B minus A. And the reason I'm squaring this is because I'm trying to find the area. So I'm multiplying one side by another, just like I did right here. But now I have a term to square, and I use the distributive property. B times B is B squared. B times negative A is minus BA. And then negative A times B is minus BA. And then lastly, negative A times negative A is plus A squared. If I simplify this, I get b squared, I'm running out of room here, minus 2ab, or 2ba, I'll leave it in that order, just combining these two, plus a squared. Now what am I doing with all this? Well again, I'm trying to prove that c squared equals a squared plus b squared. I know the area of this whole square is c squared, and I know that the area of the inside has to equal the area of these four triangles plus the little orange square in the middle. So let's add the area of the four triangles, 2ab, to the area of the little square in the middle, which is b squared minus 2ba, right, plus a squared. And what do you notice? Well, what I see right away is that I have a minus 2ba and a plus 2ab. And that might look different, but I can switch the order of b and a to match a and b. And I get minus 2ab here and plus 2ab there. Whatever a and b are, right, I'm multiplying so I can switch the order without changing the term. But here I have a positive 2ab and here I have a negative 2ab. Add those up, positive and negative, two opposites, they cancel out. And what's left? Well, a squared and b squared. What does that mean? Well, that means when we added up the areas of the four triangles to the little orange square in the middle, right, that equals a squared plus b squared. But since this total area also equals c squared, right, that means c squared has to equal a squared plus b squared, right? These two areas are the same. You can see it right in the picture. The area of this total square right here, the c square, right, inside it are the four triangles and the orange square that we just added. So the c square has to equal those areas. And we get our final proof, which is that c squared, oops, c squared equals a squared plus b squared, right? Those areas are physically equivalent. So I think the tricky part in this proof is right here, squaring the b minus a. Uh, and that's something you might want to review. You can see it in expanding polynomials. It's a typical high school topic, but we have other videos on that as well. All right, thanks.